the problem. The problem is we've got our eyes off the goal. The problem is we've got our eyes off the prize. And church became about us and how we feel and what we want. The songs we want to sing. The messages we want to hear. And then we're going to silence the children and we're not going to teach them anything about the Holy Spirit. And what happens? The church just grows older and older and older and older till the last person finally dies and then the church is gone and they build a monument to it and put the year that it was built and all the while, there's nothing inside. And that's good preaching, but it's also probably the saddest story I've ever heard in my life because that's not the church of Jesus Christ. The church is supposed to grow. We're supposed to go from glory to glory and faith to faith. We're supposed to increase. It's not just about building mega churches, but I will tell you this, that Jesus Himself led a mega church. That the apostles in the New Testament church, it was a mega church. And it's not because of the size of the people, it was because of the amount of people that they were reaching. God asked me the question, if an unbelieving spouse sanctifies a household, what does the church do for its city? And I had to think, and I thought for a long time, and I came back with an answer. I said, Lord, I suppose that the church does the same thing for the city that the believing spouse does for the household. See, because we have a judgmental view of God, we believe that sinners are deserving of death, deserving of judgment, deserving of hell. And we don't realize that God put us here to allow the sanctification that rests upon us. In other words, if you're not sanctified, the blessing and the favor of God cannot be applied to your life. To allow the sanctification that rests upon us to be superimposed on the city and the culture around us. In other words, because we are here, the people of God and the favor and the blessing of God is coming upon us. It's actually transferable to the city and the region that we live in. Let me show you. In Daniel chapter 4, it's amazing. The entire, the entire Bible was inspired by the Holy Spirit. How many of you believe that? But do you know that there is one chapter in the Old Testament that was not written by a Jew, by an Israelite? As a matter of fact, there's one chapter in the Old Testament that was actually written by somebody who is outside of relationship with God. His name was Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar writes in Daniel chapter 4, Daniel is transcribing the words of the king, and it says, Nebuchadnezzar the king, to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I thought it good to declare the signs and wonders that the Most High God has worked for me. How great are His signs, how mighty His wonders, His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and His dominion is from generation to generation. The words of Nebuchadnezzar, an unbelieving king over a nation who encounters the living God and the signs and wonders of that God and it causes his heart to turn and transform. Because this is the purpose of God's signs and wonders in the earth to transform the hearts of men and women. The church sanctifies cities so that the demonstration of the kingdom of God can come and land on that city. So that the signs and wonders that exist within the heart of every spirit-filled believer is available to all who live in that city. 